Deirdre, what does a theory of dreams have to explain? First of all, it, we need to explain just why is there any content to our nighttime sleep? And secondly, why is it so bizarre, so visual, so nonverbal compared to our waking mm -hmm. experience? And thirdly, either what is it for? What is its function? Or if it doesn't have one, sort of why does it exist, given that evolutionary theory right. suggests most things should have some function? Right. So uh, what, what are some of the theories um, out there? Certainly everybody knows Freud, yes. that, that there's these unconscious uh, um, drives or repressions or sexuality or different things that, that are the pressure of dreams. Yeah, and most of the psychoanalytic ones all have to do with sort of unconscious mechanisms that are there to take care of unconscious conflicts, which don't really sort of make a lot of practical sense mm -hmm. as an adaptive mechanism. And some of them have some very negative, self-defeating kinds of theories behind them. But more within biology, modern thinking, there are some theories that say that rapid eye movement sleep, REM sleep, which is when most dreams occur, that it has some cause and posit dreams as just completely an epiphenomena or spandrel is a term for something that's just riding on something else that has a function. That, so was the brain that has REM to... has a function and dreams don't. That's... So REM has a function of uh, cleaning up the brain or getting the brain better uh, metabolically or better organizationally in terms of its electrical activity. And because you're engaging different parts of the brain, that triggers the, the dreams, which are the froth ri riding on the wave. And it has no causative effect, no relationship to anything else. We think it does. We imagine all these things, the Freudian stuff, but it's really kind of totally irrelevant. Yeah. And then most of uh, most psychologists and psychiatrists who think much about dreams probably still believe some version of the more psychoanalytic ideas mm -hmm. that dreams are handling taboo impulses or they're trying to express things in some intentionally disguised manner. And even today, I think we've we've got people who would say that they think dreams have some divine origin. Oh, that well. that's more of a historic <laughs> right. view, right. but that's that's still right. So so there's a huge range. So of you go ideas. from the pure biology where dreams are a, a froth, mm -hmm. to dreams being the core of our subconscious, which drives everything we do, to intimidating. Now your personal approach focuses on dreams as a, a, a source of problem solving and creativity. Yeah. I I think they're meaningful. I, I think that probably many of their characteristics are there because of the necessities of REM sleep and that a lot of it is biologically determined. Mm -hmm. Why we're in this exact biochemical state may have more to do with replenishing transmitters. But then once we are, it looks like we stay concerned with the same issues and are trying to problem solve and think about things in in dreams and certainly I'm not saying that most of the time we make great solutions <laughs> most of our waking thinking doesn't come up <laughs> with great solutions in any few minutes either but sometimes dreams make breakthroughs and there there are a lot of anecdotes about famous examples of major creativity or major scientific problem solving. But I've also done research on just uh, much more mundanely college students uh, trying to solve problems in their dreams. And I found that about half of the students in a course of a week of doing that dreamed about their problem, as mm -hmm. in the topic of the problem clearly showed up in the dream as rated by objective raters as well as, as the students. And then about half of those had a solution, so one-fourth 